Welcome to Click, a podcast about people, property and places. I'm your host, Josh Kindred, and today we're joined by Red Superstar Bryce Hegarty. Thanks for joining us today, Bryce. Thanks for having me on, Josh. Looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be excellent. We're going to get to know you. We're going to get to know a little bit about uh, you as a person, but also maybe some of your property journey and some of the, the places that you've been. Mate, um, typically my understanding of footy players is they, they usually got a, a bit of a nickname. Have you got a nickname? Is it just Heggs or what's what's the go-to? Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty simple, um, I suppose. Just Heggs. Well, that's a nickname that I'll, I'll give for this podcast, but yeah, Heggs. So yeah, yeah, okay. If you want. We'll keep the other ones <laughs> yeah. for later. Yeah, Very good. So, Bryce, tell us... Um, I suppose you as a person, you're a, you're a rugby superstar. You you play. You're with the Reds now. Um, you you came back to Queensland after growing up in Queensland, and um, prior to that, you were playing down in Melbourne and Sydney. Tell us about that. Yeah, so kind of you know grew up in Queensland, and um, you know made my journey um, down to Melbourne uh, initially to play for Melbourne Rebels for three years, and. Um, and of course, went to um, New South Wales Waratahs for three years as well, and you know, found myself back up here in Queensland the beginning of this year, and um, absolutely loved it. It's kind of the place I've wanted to be for a while now, and here for another two years now. So I'm I'm really looking forward to that, um, especially being a Queenslander. So I'm yeah. loving it up here. Yeah, excellent. So um, I understand you played for the Broncos under twenties. Yep, so I kind of grew up playing rugby league and then went through the Broncos um, pathway, played for the under-20s there for three years. And yep. then when I was um, 19, 20, moved to Melbourne. So um, I, I love my time in, um, at the Broncos there. Yeah, so Wikipedia says that everybody wanted a piece of Heggs. Um, AFL, rugby league, rugby union. What was it like and, and what age were you when you decided to go down to Melbourne and, and take a contract with the Rebels? I was a pretty tough decision initially. Um you know, as I said before, growing up playing rugby league, uh, but I did go to Maris Ashgrove. Yep. It's a good school, um, you know, obviously a rugby union school. Um, so kind of conflicting views for a while there in my high school years between rugby union and rugby league um, and a little bit of AFL. But um, once I was kind of my last year at 20s at Broncos, um, that was just a good opportunity in Melbourne. Um, and I, I kind of just went with it. Um didn't really know what to expect, um, but you know, haven't haven't looked back since. Love love my time so far in Union, and I've also enjoyed. I really like that Union's kind of a worldwide game. Yeah, kind of can go everywhere throughout the world and play. You know, we travel. This year we went to South Africa. You know, Japan, um, New Zealand, and you go to Argentina. You go to some amazing places throughout the world. So it, it's been good. Yeah, amazing. And so, um, how old were you when you when you went from Rebels to to the Tars? How old were you, and what's that, what's that journey like? Going leaving, I suppose, home. Um, what what was it like for you as a as a young footballer, but also just a young guy? Yeah. So when I changed from Melbourne Rebels to the Waratahs, that was twenty two. Yep. Three. So um, yeah, went. You know, obviously the Waratahs are a, a big, um, you know, province in Australian rugby, similar to you know the Queensland, the QIU. Um, so. I didn't really know what to expect coming from Melbourne, who are a newer club in the competition. A right. um, lot of history at the Waratahs. Um, yeah. Fortunately, got there in first game of the season. I did my ACL, so I missed the whole oh, year. No. But, um, you know, I, I, I certainly learned a lot from the Waratahs and, and learned a lot um, around rugby. About it's, it's a very different environment. Obviously, Sydney, whereas compared to Melbourne, um, rugby is a relatively... You know, new and junior sport. Right. Um, Sydney, obviously, and Brisbane, it's it's a lot more popular. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I love my time there. Yeah, excellent. And um, and then from the Waratahs, um, uh, you spent a little bit of time in Japan, is it, before the Reds? Yep. So I spent some time in Japan just outside of Tokyo in a place called Setagayaku. Okay. Um, unreal experience. Yep. I was there for about oh, four or five months. Okay. Playing for a team called the Rico Black Rams. Okay. Um, so, awesome competition over there. Um, you know, well, now the se- previously the season kind of ran in between Super Rugby seasons, so you know it was quite you know viable to do a, a stint in between, right? Which is and very um, appealing to. But um, now, f- as of next year, they've changed it to um, run in line with Super Rugby season. Okay. So, and you've seen some super rugby guys, I suppose, 
go to Japan rather than playing Super Rugby for the next few years. Yeah, um, and and that, is that just because of the lucrative nature with, with the cash there on offer? Yeah, essentially, to put it bluntly, I think that's a major drawing point for Japan. It's all private, yeah. all the teams. You're playing for companies. Um, you know, there's some companies, very, very wealthy companies over there. Your Suntories, your Coca-Cola, your Panasonic, yep. Rico. Yeah. Um, and it's 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 appealing to live in Japan if you haven't lived there right before. So um, you know, and, and they're lovely people over there. Um, bit of a culture shock initially, but you know, I, I'd say to everyone that's thinking about it, I'd say definitely give it a crack because it's, it's such a good spot and such a good place to live. Yeah, okay. Now you got to split across the eye. One of my understandings is that you know some of the players go over there because it's it's not as rough and there's a little bit more cash. Is is, is that the story, or is it is it still pretty fierce and competitive? Um, yeah, no, I think I think that that might be one of the kind of ways. I think generally I extends few, their playing career. Yeah, and a few years ago, I think people would go over there kind of at the back end of their career um, right. to kind of it's quite lucrative to you know finish up generally with the thought that the rugby would be a bit easier. Yep. Um, but to be honest, over the last few years, it's it's inc- the I suppose the um, quality of rugby has definitely improved, um, and it, it's quite a strong competition now. So. Uh, I think people are starting to find that they're going over there now. It's, it's pretty serious rugby that they're going into. Yeah, right. Um, but, you know, and the Japanese, as you've seen, the national team at the last World Cup, shocked a few people. Yeah. And, um, you know, hopefully for them this year they go well in Japan. Yeah, yeah. So with all the opportunities that you, that you do have on your plate, um, what, makes you, what makes you come back to the Reds this year and what makes you, you know, look forward to the next two years? You're, you're 27. And um, and you you've obviously got a, a great couple of years ahead of you. What made you lock in the Reds? I suppose I just felt like in Australian rugby, there's a few things that I want to achieve first. Um, in particular, playing for your, my home state, playing for right. Queensland, which is something I'm really passionate about. And I know a lot of the squad have you know similar beliefs in that regard. Um, I really I really do want to win a, a Super Rugby Championship and I really feel like Queensland is definitely the place to be for that. Right. Um, and, of course, and of course, play for the Wallabies as well. So it's kind of within the next two years, um, you know, hoping to uh, tick off some of those goals and mm. achieve what, you know, hopefully I want to achieve. Um, but, you know, I'm very excited for it because it's, it's certainly, I feel like Queensland rugby over the next few years is going to be an exciting place. It does feel like that. And, and what is that? Is that the, the camaraderie with you guys, or the coaching staff, or is it just all, all those things coming together? Um, I, think, I think it is all of it coming together um, because, you know, everyone brings their own unique, you know, self to the team. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what's so special about Queensland at the moment is, you know, Everyone involved, people up in the office, the staff, the media, the um, the players, everyone generally is really, you know, I suppose, wanting the same thing yeah. um, and all in each other's corners. So, you know, and, and know each other really well, which is certainly something that being from other places, I think Queensland has an advantage over other places in yeah. that regard, that... Um, generally invested and in, in wanting to know the people you're working with and um, there's a lot of close people in the team and in the organisation. Yeah, okay. Is, is that something that um, for you that you've seen happen under Brad Thorne's guidance or is it, is it there's, a, there's a lot of people that are bringing that because of the common goal? I think a lot of people are, are bringing those values in particular. I think, I think Brad is, um, has come from teams where those type of values have been instilled in him. And um, he's certainly leading the way and pushing them in Queensland and doing a good job of that. Yeah. Um, but I think credit throughout the, the whole office and whole organisation is where it's due. And ev- everyone, um, you know, as I said before, has certainly got, you know, each other's back and supporting each other. And everyone does really want the best for Queensland rugby. Yeah. And that's um, what we're all working at. And, you know, certainly improvements this season and hopefully next year again. As I said before, I'm very excited for next year and I think it'll be a lot a lot better as well. It's amazing to talk to you. I mean, we, we talk to all sorts of different people, business people, um, politicians, uh, football players, sports people. And, and that feeling of team and the, the importance of that team culture where everybody's pushing for one thing um, and knowing each other together is, is so critical. And um, it's almost like you... 
you know, it's important for you individually, but you, you put aside that individual aspect and just try to bring your unique ability to the team. It's That's wonderful to hear. Tell me, when you were prior to um, leaving school, you, you're a young fellow. What does that look like? Where you was a pretty good um, upbringing. You left home pretty early to go away for footy. Did you... Um, did you have dreams of becoming a, a footy player? Was that what you thought about when you're sitting at the the high school table, or, or what were you thinking about? Yeah, certainly. I kind of, I suppose, throughout my whole life, have had goals and definitely wanted to, you know, achieve them throughout my life. Um, one of them was to become a professional um, footy player, and um, you know, certainly, happily, that's that's a goal I can proudly say I've done and achieved, and I've had a lot of help from, you know, certain people in my life, and I'm really grateful for. All that, um, and th- th- I suppose in high school in particular, there are times where you kind of often you get told you're too small, you're too skinny, especially too skinny in my case. But um, yep. it, it's always good to, I suppose, prove those you know naysayers wrong and and achieve something. And you know, I'm I'm really proud of that, um, and I'm I'm really enjoying where I'm at at the moment. And um, in terms of my career. I've, Right now is probably the best I've physically I've felt, um, and the most excited I've been leading into a season. Right. Um, so that would be the twenty twenty season. So yeah. yeah, it's an it's it's an exciting time um, for me personally, as I said for QRU and the Reds as well. Um, and it's certainly something I'm very proud of. You know, having achieved growing up, wanting to be a um, professional rugby player in my yep. life. So I'm I'm very happy with that. Yeah, that's excellent. So so it was one of those little dreams that you had out there and you know what is it that I suppose if you can unlock for us what is it that uh, makes you drive past the the naysayers you know what, what's that inside that sort of says you know you are too skinny um well I, th- I think that regardless of you know everyone in life people are gonna doubt that's just the reality of society at the moment um unfortunately that people often want to you know put people down and make themselves feel better. Right. Um, and I think that is definitely increasing in society. So I think the people that are better with dealing that generally will be the people better, you know, succeeding. And, yeah. um, you know, I, I look at it as a way that, you know, I don't really think twice about it now. Maybe initially it affected me more yep. than it should have. Um, and I certainly know people that it does affect, and, right. um, whether it's in business or, or sport or family or, or whatever but um i think you know the most important thing is to stay true to yourself believe in yourself and really be quite resilient with all yeah. that stuff and, and persist in your goal because you know there's a reason that you want to achieve something so you shouldn't let you know anyone else or you know never nobody so to speak to you know put you down and get in the way yeah but what's the the best advice you've been given over your, your playing career to deal with and and i suppose build that resilience is there is there a sticking piece there um, it's just to back your back your own ability, right. um, and don't don't doubt yourself. I've I've found like um, I found that probably the best piece of advice is just to you know stay true to yourself and um, you know do what you believe in and, and really back yourself. So in terms of a particular bit of advice or if someone said something to me that's helped me, it's it's probably been an accumulation of a few things. And I've probably learned it over years. It hasn't been a particular instance. Right. Um, I've probably learned through experiences as well. Yeah. Um, and I suppose that's one way to learn. And I, f- I feel like you know, slowly getting on top of it now. And I'm, I'm, as I said before, I'm enjoying myself in the position I'm in now. So you've, uh, we're going to change gears a little. You, you've obviously you're backing yourself, and you're looking forward to a huge 2020 season. And that's obviously, I imagine you're laser focused on that. Um, but you, you are a property owner. Um, you, you bought a property quite young. What, what was the experience like? Tell us about that. Yep. So I bought a property in 2015, um, yep. October, I think, 2015. Okay. Whereabouts? So in Mitchelton. Okay. Yep. Um, Very good. So it's done. It's doing well for me at the moment. Um, so it's investment it's property. A, yeah, purely investment property. Yep. Um, at, at the moment, anyway. So, so you would have bought that property as an investment while you're living in Sydney. I bought that as an investment as I was living in Melbourne, transitioning from Melbourne to Sydney. I was right. actually in Japan okay. for a few months then. For a few playing. months. So, yep. um, what's that like trying to? What's that like buying a house 
while you're in the middle of moving from Melbourne to Sydney, living in Japan, <laughs> and it's your first home. It was. It, it was sounds like it's easy. <laughs> no, well, it was. It was quite stressful um, initially, but um, luckily, it's kind of been familiar with Mitchelton. Growing up at Sanford, um, okay. I was familiar with the area. Done a, a fair bit of research into you know the property I wanted to buy, um, why I wanted to buy it, um, and I had my parents living at Sanford, so they could, I suppose, go and, go, check, it out. Go and check it out for me. And yeah. um, so I was very grateful that they, they could help me out in that regard. Um, but, you know, when it when it came up, this particular property, I just jumped on it and, um, you know, it was really good. It, it was quite a pretty quick process and I was, you know, initially I was like, wow, this this property thing's quite cool. Um, yep. Loved it, straight into it. And, um, you know, it proves the sec- next time I'm looking for property now, it's, it's a bit more difficult. So you're, so you're looking for a second property now? Somewhere yeah. to live or, or another investment? Uh, no, somewhere somewhere to live. Yep. Um, so looking kind of particularly around the Ashgrove area. Okay. Um, in saying that, you know, anywhere within that, in around that area. So, um, but it has been a little bit more difficult this time. Um, couldn't really say why. Maybe it's because I've had the luxury of not need, not, you know, being a bit more relaxed with it okay. um, and not rushing into buying. Is um, it because it's somewhere for you to live? You're a little bit more emotionally invested in? Yeah, I think, I think that's definitely... Uh, a major reason because obviously and it's it's a bit more money than the Mitchelton house as well right. purely as you said because it's my Mitchelton was just an investment property as well yep. um, whereas this is a place that you know I'm, I'm planning on living and um, so you know a bit more heart is going into this one I think yeah okay and um, so what's what's the research look like for you you know you, you're a busy guy you're, you're obviously training flat out and then traveling all around the world What's it like? You, can you can you research for a couple of weeks? Or you just do it online. You you look all the time, or are you one of these guys that sort of want, looks once every now and then? Yeah. Well, I think initially I was definitely a guy that looked once every now and then. Yeah. And it was more I was just saying, oh yeah, I should get another property, you know. As you know, yeah. but now over the last couple of months, um, I've certainly picked up how I'm searching, and um, you know, I'm I'm going and looking at going through houses at least three times a week. Wow. Um, wow. I've started dropping in like little letters. On no people way. Seeing if they wanted to sell in particular areas or particular neighbourhoods or houses that I want to buy. Okay. So I'm trying to be a little bit more savvy with how I'm approaching buying this next property. Right. Um, you know, hopefully it works out for me. What um, does the letter say? I, I would love to know this. <laughs> what does the letter say to these people? <laughs> hey, hey, it's Hegs here. <laughs> it's Hegs. Can you sell me your property, please? Um, no, it's... I don't know, just a, a polite, you know, way of saying, you know, I'm, you know, a young guy looking to um, buy a property in this, you know, area. For example, I might say Ashgrove. Yep. Um, really like this street. I really love your house. And you know, if you're if you're looking to sell or wanting to sell in the future, you know, please don't hesitate to contact me. Um, you know, just things along those lines. Just nothing too crazy. Just really just. Checking in on people and seeing, yeah, yeah. you know, you never know what you might get. You got to ask the question. Yeah, and of course. See what the answer have is. you not? You haven't got someone that can that can do that for you, or like I mean, there's obviously real estate agents that what, yeah. you just haven't had a good experience with them, or um, what, what's the story? There are. I ha- I haven't not had a good experience with them, but there's. I just feel like it, it's a more personal approach. Yep. And I I don't know. I feel like I kind of put my shoes in myself in their shoes and just thought well you know if someone did that to to me i might i might have a think and i might actually you know if someone had genuine interest in my house you know people get quite connected i think to a house or home that they lived in for a while Um, especially if it's an older um person older generation that's lived there for a while um generally they're quite emotionally invested to the house and i think Generally, they'd want the house going to someone that. That's you know, that's might. amazing because uh, my experience in property, and, and I've heard a lot of people say to me, "Well, oh, actually, we're we're prepared to sell it to, um, you know, we're prepared to sell it to this guy because you know we can see they're going to have a family here and they're going to stay here for a long time." And that's amazing. I, I I don't think we typically think of that as buyers or or sellers. So, mate, um, I've got a marketing team that are going to show you something that's pretty crazy it's a it's called v, vr property where we're bringing it to i don't know the the closest shopping center near you it's a it's a new product have you ever looked at a property through vr 
No, I haven't. No. Have you ever looked at anything in VR? Um, oh, cheers. I don't think so. No, not, not. So you're about to, we're about to throw some goggles on you. Righty, chuck them on. <laughs> this is a game of trust. <laughs> okay. We're going a bit rogue here, but it's, it's the tech center of property. So just hold on to it with your left hand just there. Yep. And just put your right hand out like you're grabbing a gaming controller. Okay. So kind of just there and finger over the trigger at the back. Oh, yep. And just point to the bottom right hand corner where you can see the little goggle logo. Hover over that little logo, like point at it, and then just fire the trigger. And it should load it into a full screen view for you. Eggs is just walking around a house yeah. at the moment. Okay. Do we, which house is he walking in? I'm in, no, what have I said? It said, enter VR. So it should be in Edith Street in Fusion. Edith hey. Street. Whereabouts in the house are you? I'm in the lounge. Oh, here we go. She's just gone. So Black. hover over the little um, spheres that are in the middle of the air. That'll take you to the different Yep, she's just loading to Edith Street. Okay, awesome. I'm in the lounge room. Fantastic. Can you walk around that house for us? Don't actually walk around. Don't, I was about oh, yeah, to get up. <laughs> you always stay in your chair, but yeah. you can walk around. Is That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. So what do I do to move around? So that trigger that you've got on um, yep. with your index finger, so yep. basically you just need to point at the little blue spheres in the middle of the air, and if you point at that and click on them, it'll take you to where the sphere is. Oh, yeah, cool. And I can move, I think. There we go. So you should be able to look all the way behind you, to your right, to your left. Oh, yeah. Up, well, yeah. up down, everywhere. Oh, cool. So you're What's actually this? walking around this house. Where are you now? I'm in the kitchen now. What's it like? Um, well, it's it's quite cool. You know, it's, it's a modern kitchen. Um, I can see out in the yard. Yeah. I can see myself out there. Um, okay. I can walk out there? Okay. Go for a walk out. Is there a back deck? There is. Where's this screen? To be honest, at the moment, I'm doing a bit of circle work in the lounge room. <laughs> <laughs> Chasing his tail. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Bryce is sitting here with a um, with, uh, VR headset on, and this VR headset is probably a couple of hundred bucks. We expect that... By sort of the end of 2022, everybody will have these as a standard feature in their home. And um, this is something that um, we're wondering whether, you know, the property experience will start to speed up because people can really view property in a, um, I suppose, a real virtual type of manner. Um, what's it like? Are you still looking around the house there, Bryce? Yeah, I'm, I'm slowly trying to make my way around. Um, <laughs> mate, I think it's an awesome concept. Obviously, this makes things a lot easier. Um, in term, I can, you know, there's like as I can see on the right hand side, there's all different spots. There's a house in Deegan, a house in Newport, a house in Rothwell, a house yep. in Clontarf. So, so you're in, you're in the menu at the moment. Yeah. And so you can basically you can just click on that menu and then walk through any house you like, all in the comfort of your own headset. Okay. Yeah. There you go. So um, I suppose you know, property journey is changing. We've still got guys putting letters in people's. Um, boxes but then yeah we are with there's all sorts of things like vr trying to speed up that process so that the consumer can experience property differently is it um for you like are you in a hurry have you got a goal or is you know somebody that's putting out letters in a it seems like you're pretty passionate um yeah i i suppose i'm i'm not in a hurry i've been pretty fortunate at the moment, we've been, last couple of months, been staying with my um, fiancé's parents. So that's potentially another reason why I haven't, we haven't rushed in to right. buy that next property. Um, but I'm certainly really interested in property yep. and um, wanting to buy a house that, you know, I can see selves living in um, yep. for a while. Um, I'm certainly interested in property in general, investment properties, um, Probably about 90% of my friends are tradies or a, yep. of a particular trade. So um, that's exciting for me and helpful. Um, they've helped me with my investment property, do a couple of things okay. there. Yep. Um, and I'm going to continue to do to add some more things there. Yeah, um, yeah. But in terms of I'm not so in a rush just because of the position that we're in. We're pretty lucky at the moment. But yeah, I'm okay. saying that I'm also... Definitely keen, keen keenly interested. Yeah, keenly interested. 
so what is uh you know if you didn't make it as a footy player or, or your ACL injury gone really bad and you, and you didn't make it what w- what would you be doing right now um well I'd like to think I'd be doing some sort of law I'm nearly finished a law degree okay um so hopefully I would have finished that by now yeah yeah <laughs> yep I've been with rugby it's been pretty full on and I've been able to kind of just tick away at the degree um cool done about 85 90 percent of the degree now so nearly finished yeah um and once that's done you know whether i do end up going into law or not i'm i'm not sure um but you know it's been good keeping my mind ticking over and it's only probably been over the last couple of years in particular that i've actually taken any interest in property okay um that first investment house was purely a financial really decision yeah um at the time but over time, I suppose that comes with growing up and, um, you know, learning more about property in general and the real estate market and, yep. and, and kind of what goes on in there um, that I, I have developed a, um, a big interest in it. So maybe a future after after playing, which is, is miles off your radar at the moment, might be might be in property or maybe a mixture of property and law. Yeah, potentially. That's, that's kind of what I'm... Uh, I suppose if you had to give you an answer now, that's the way I'm leaning at the moment. Yeah, wow. And so um, the places you've been, tell me, of all the places you've been, you've lived in Japan, um, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, what, what's the place that, you know, strikes you as the place you want to spend the next 20, 30 years? Um, definitely Brisbane. Yep. I, um, living kind of in Melbourne from 19 to 22, um, was awesome uh it's a beautiful city um obviously melbourne and sydney are both very big cities and brisbane's definitely catching up to catching up to them um i had very different experiences in both melbourne and sydney um love my time in each for different reasons but um probably preferred melbourne actually a little bit more which okay. surprised me i didn't think i would but um you know it's a well-designed city i love the, the cafe scene um and just the general vibe of Melbourne I found was really cool. Yeah. Um, but definitely over the next 20 years, kind of I want to set up in Brisbane. Yeah. Um, I like the space. There's just a lot more. I find that there's, you know, a lot more space, more affordable. Yep. Um, you know, growing up here, I'm, you know, I'm probably a bit biased towards it. But, you know, I'm a Queenslander. I'm a Queenslander at heart. Yeah. It's where I want to be. All my family's here. Most heaps of my friends are here. Um partners from here as well so it, it's certainly somewhere we can see ourselves you know setting up for the future and you know hopefully raising a family as well yeah excellent and so i, I suppose of all the places you've been you've you, you mentioned a, a pretty long list of places that you've gone for playing what, what's the favorite place you've ever been and and talk us through it what does it look like um well i suppose it's it's the experience that you have at the place that really you know makes it what it is for you and i the four months I've recently had in Tokyo, well, n- right next to Tokyo and said a guy was awesome. I absolutely loved my time at Rico. Um, cool. Playing rugby was was great there. We had a really good team. Um, so over there, I think I was the only Aussie in the team. Okay. So you learn a little bit of Japanese. Yeah, I learned a, f- a fair bit of Japanese, which was good. I certainly enjoyed it. There, were, I think there was about seven or eight Kiwis. Okay. In the in the side, um, so. You know, I love my time there. I, I got on well with them, which was, you know, I suppose good. Um, but in terms of best places I've been to play, um, certain parts of Africa are amazing. Okay. Cape Town is an amazing place to go. I don't know if you've been, have you been to Cape Town? I haven't, I haven't been to Cape Town. I've, um, I had a terrible experience in Tanzania, um, which, which I won't share with you, but I, yeah, I got taken off a mountain with some sort of lung disease or something so yeah it's a shitty story <laughs> <laughs> tell us about cape town <laughs> um cape yeah well cape town luckily that didn't happen to me in cape town but um it's a it's a beautiful place um obviously the mountain famous for its you know table mountain there yeah. um you climbed it or right no, i haven't climbed it been been taken to the top though on the okay the, oh yeah on the, Gondola. On, on the gondola <laughs> yeah. but um it was cool awesome views like you know around the whole 360 views around everything yeah awesome um the beach is right there um did you feel safe we did yeah it felt very safe yep. um 
and we, we we do. I find when we when we travel to Africa, we feel safe. Um, you just don't. You learn not to put yourself in precarious positions, really. Right. You know, like, you're probably not going to go wandering the street at midnight, you know, yeah. when, you know. You might not do that downtown Brisbane either. No, nah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, it's, I every time I've gone to Africa, I've really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. And rugby stadiums there, there's a lot of history with those stadiums. The stadiums are probably my favourite stadiums to play at. Okay. Um, they're phenomenal. Um, and then playing at altitudes is quite different to, to, you know, just playing at sea level. So, yeah, um, yeah. It, it's a... It's a know pretty amazing experience yeah fantastic bryce Hegarty, thank you so much for joining us this is a click podcast you're an absolute star we wish you and the reds all the best in 2020 um we know you're going to be a star thanks very much for joining us and um sharing a little bit about yourself and and your property experience and some of the places you've been